Hi there, welcome to this home practice groundwork session on improvisation, movement research and exploration. Hi, my name is Tom. I'm a white male standing dancer with a bushy beard. Um, so we, we're going to talk about and practice some improvisation, uh, movement research and exploration today. Um, and these approaches that I'm going to offer are, are approaches that I've found useful for myself. Um, and you might use them uh, in a class setting or if you're performing or also if you're making dance as well. I'm going to introduce the subject for about five to ten minutes, so just make sure you're comfortable and we'll get to moving a bit later on in the session. Um, a lot of this information is in the description below, so you don't have to take copious notes. Um, but you might also like to have a journal um, or notebook uh, ready. Uh, as we start moving, you might also want to take some notes um, as we go. This is a video so you can pause and practice any time you like if you need a rest or want a moment to reflect or you want to review something or try something again. So, um, improvisation. Improvisation is a term widely used to talk about dance that isn't fixed into a set choreography, sequence or routine. People use this term in lots of different ways, so it's always worth asking what someone means when they say improvisation. It could be something very specific, or it could be something quite loose. Um, other people might talk about instant composition or instant choreography instead of improvisation. Um, uh, and I like these terms as they suggest a kind of clarity or a clear intention. Exploration and research. So both choreography and improvisation can be very effective. It just depends on what you want or need. And if you're not sure what you want or need, exploration and research are great ways to find out. We can think or work something out through moving. We can also explore just for the satisfaction of exploring and learning. It doesn't necessarily have to lead to an end product such as a choreography or performance. Exploration and research can help us uh, learn different ways to move, dance and think. Having the confidence to just explore can also be a great way to start dancing or start creating. Understanding scores. A score is a framework. It's a framework for dancing or moving when there isn't a set choreography. This might be different to, to for example, a musical score where one note is played after the, uh, the next. Um, it's more like a collection of possibilities or activities to choose from. A score provides instructions so that you know what to do or what to investigate, what to attempt or what to be busy with when you're dancing. Um, it can uh, give a focus so that dancing isn't just random or chaotic, although that might be part of a score too. It might be something very simple, for example, a small dance on the spot with the eyes closed. Or it could be something quite complicated, um, for example, involving imagery or complex meaning, um, paradox or involving more than one person, etc, etc. I've heard dance maker and performer Lisa Nelson talk about using scores as a way to survive improvisation. Um, I like this way of thinking about scores. They become an essential tool to get you through improvisation. And I think they um, not only help you survive improvisation, but thrive in it too. Exploration is a good tool inside a score. It can be hard to begin anything. Exploring gets things going, and it doesn't matter if it starts well or not, you can modify and adjust as you go. 
I found a few extra ways to navigate moving and dancing, especially when in, uh, improvising or following a score. Curiosity. What interests you today? Uh, in this score or in this class, something that the teacher has said or something that you're learning about perhaps in a different context. Uh, curiosity really helps you dig into a dance or subject um, that you want to explore or that has been proposed by uh, a teacher or a choreographer. Uh, where your curiosity takes you may be surprising. Desire. So what do you want to do or what do you feel like doing? Sometimes uh, when we give permission uh, to do what we want, it can give us a lot of energy or it's really satisfying. Um, that can sound perhaps a bit selfish, but I think in practice, it's really a generous gift that um, you give to someone that uh, you're dancing with or dancing for. Enjoyment and play. We learn really effectively through play. And when we enjoy something, we want to do it more. Improvisation doesn't have to be hard work. And it's always good when we don't try too hard. So we're going to um, look at about four or five tasks. Um, and what we do um, in those tasks is less important than how we do it. So the approach that I'm gonna offer you um, is the tool that I want you to take away uh, with you today. Um, you can just join in. As I set up a task, you just join in when you're ready. Um, I may start speaking and moving. It, I think it helps me to just to think. Um, and this first one is going to be about exploring possibilities. So we're just going to try things out without being too precious about what we do, uh, not worrying too much if it's good or not. It's just about exploring um, and having a go. So just start where you are if you're comfortable. If you want to change position, that's also fine. Um, this uh, first task uh, or exercise is about finding different ways that the hands can fit together. So I'm just going to explore for a few minutes how, a lot, how my hands fit together, all of the different ways that my hands might fit together. So I might hold one hand in another or I might um, cradle or grip. And if your hands are perhaps less accessible, you can also choose a different part of your body or two parts of your body that can start to play with this fitting together. So I might rest or cradle. And in between each position, there is a transition. And I might like to focus on the position or the transition or a bit of both. Perhaps one is a lot more interesting for you, just the transitions, or perhaps the end places, the pauses of position, the way the hands fit together. You might find that your positions are very subtly different, or perhaps there's big changes, and that might be more pleasurable or enjoyable for you. As you continue to play, just check in what is fueling your, um, your investigation. Is it the, the fixed positions or is it the transitions? Is it the kind of movement? Is it about um, precision? Or perhaps about the feeling, the feeling of the hands touching the other, one touching the other, or whatever body parts uh, you're working with. So just a few more moments. Perhaps there are positions that you might not have tried yet.
and when you're ready, you can come to finish. So we'll take, um, we'll take a moment just to reflect on that. And if you have your, your notebook, you're welcome to take some notes here. Um, did you enjoy it? That seems a very simple question, but I think it's really important. Did you enjoy it? Um, and what did you enjoy about it? I, I talked about a few things like the positions or the transitions, um, but it might be something else. What fueled your investigation? What kind of kept you interested? And that's really important too. So can you think about what it was that you really enjoyed about it? And perhaps if you didn't enjoy it, if it was um, a bit uh, boring or you got a bit stuck, perhaps if you were to try it again, what could you change about the task that it would uh, work better for you? So this might be a time that you might like to pause Practice again, try it again in a different way, perhaps, and then you can uh, join back in when you're ready. So the next thing we're gonna focus on is our interest and curiosity. What keeps you interested in the task? Um, and the framework we're gonna use for that is um, playing with being off balance. And we can do that in a number of ways, finding a position that's less stable, um, that you're not on balance, but you're slightly off balance. If you're a standing dancer, you might try perhaps working on one leg. Um, if you're working seated or in a wheelchair, you might perhaps come forward in your chair um, and try leaning in different directions, or perhaps uh, coming into a wheelie if you're uh, feeling confident with a wheelie. Um, you might also like to try working with your eyes closed or perhaps looking in different directions, um, also ways that uh, kind of uh, destabilize our positions. As long as you feel safe, you're not gonna bump into anything um, in your nice clear space. Um, so I'm just gonna start um, in my, my version of this, uh, this this balance or this off balance position. And any time that I get tired, perhaps I can just shift and find a slightly different position. And remember, it's not about uh, what we're doing. It's the, um, the focus on how I keep my interest in this task. What keeps me curious to continue to explore and enjoy the exploration. So that sense of play also can be very helpful. So anytime you get tired or you just want to change, you can try something else. And as we tune in to this off balance task, what is it that you enjoy? Is it the feeling of the off balance? Or perhaps there's something about enjoying the skill needed to maintain this off balance place. Perhaps you might enjoy um, the feeling of falling or perhaps the achievement of Ah, saving yourself at the last moment. Ha. So for the next few moments, we'll uh, keep exploring, making changes when you need so you can keep discovering and working out what is it for you what, that you find enjoyable, satisfying, keeps you interested. Remember you can work with your eyes closed or perhaps looking here in a different direction. And it's not about achieving anything, it's more just about tuning in. What is it that you enjoy? It might be something very simple or it might be something really large or complicated. 
And what I'm doing might be very different to what you're doing. So it's really fine to be doing something very different. And when you're ready, we can take a pause there and come back to a stable place. So once again, a moment to reflect. What was it that kept you interested? Um, and if you get, got stuck or you were bored at any point or you weren't sure what to do next, perhaps you could reflect on what you might do differently or what you might try out differently so that this task would work better for you. And you can, uh, as usual, you can pause and practice again if you like. So next up, we're going to look at making choices inside a score. And hopefully this will um, give lots of confidence and permission to start to navigate your own way inside a score. Making choices to make something come alive or make something more enjoyable for you. Um, and hopefully to be a bit more creative too. So we're gonna work with um, an image. And this image comes from uh, a Japanese Buto dancer called Masaki Iwana. Um, and I worked with him in a few workshops quite a few years ago. And the image is light shining from the internal organs. So th again, this is just the framework. And inside that framework, we're gonna explore making choices. So I'm gonna guide you through um, this image and then uh, offering up some choices um, for you to start to navigate through. Find yourself in a, in a working position where you feel ready to move. And I'd recommend being upright, could be seated or standing. Um, and you're gonna see um, an image coming up on your screen of um, our internal organs. And this is just a chance, if you're not um, uh, familiar with the position of the organs, this is just a, uh, a little helper that you can then uh, find an organ for yourself. It might be something that you're familiar with, perhaps the heart or the um, lungs. I don't think you can see it in this image, but um, the brain is also, of course, an internal organ. You might choose that or perhaps other organs, perhaps the guts or the, the liver also choices there. So in this working position and having made your choice of where you want uh, to work in the body and an organ you want to start with, you might like to close your eyes or perhaps just soften your eyes to start with. And then working with an image will build it up um, steadily. What would it be like for a light to start to shine from this place inside your body. What kind of sensation would that, um, would that bring up in that particular place? Perhaps it might make you move. And if so, what kind of movement would that be? And we can start to make some more choices here. What kind of light is it that's shining? Does it have a, a color? And I want you to have full permission to make decisions here. It's gonna be this color or that color. Is the light dim like a candle, for example, or is it bright like um, a car headlight? Is it constant? Or does it perhaps go on and off like a lighthouse? Does it shine in a particular direction? Or perhaps it shines in all directions? And is it very still in the body? Or perhaps it might move? Perhaps it might move to a different place in the body, another organ or, or a completely different part. And you can make your own choices. There are no right choices here. We're just exploring. 
So you might make a new choice. You might change your mind. Sometimes it might be, uh, it might feel helpful to really stay with one choice and explore that. So you can go a bit deeper into that choice and where that might take you. And other times you might need to just maybe start again, start afresh. And we can perhaps make some choices about the focus, what we want to focus on in this image. Perhaps it's the, um, the image itself, creating the image itself in the body through moving. Perhaps you're concentrating on the sensation of this light and how it might move or show up in the body. Or perhaps you're describing this image with your body through gesture perhaps. So just a few more moments to see where these choices take you. Sometimes staying with one choice, exploring that, and other, choice, and other times making different choices. And then we're going to uh, find a way to end. And then once again, a moment to reflect. How was that to make choices? Was it difficult? Or did it flow quite easily, one choice to the next? Or building choices into a bigger, a bigger uh, fuller experience? How did your choices affect your movement? And then perhaps a chance to pause and practice. You might like to go back and make different choices, perhaps choose a different uh, place in the body, a different organ, a different kind of light to explore a bit further. So this next score will be more about responding than making choices. And you might have a personal preference. You might like to make very specific choices in your improvisation or your score. Um, and for some people, um, responding to what happens uh, will, be, will work better for them. Um, and you'll, it's good to try all, all possibilities and see what works best for you. Um, what we're going to do is in a, in a comfortable working position, um, we're going to make a directional rub or brush um, on the skin. So I'm going to use my hand on to my forearm. Uh, it might be a, a different, different body parts for you, so up to you to decide. So I'm making a directional rub or brush and I'm generating some sensation in the skin of that place that I've just brushed. And then I'm going to allow that um, sensation or for my, I'm going to allow myself to respond through movement to that sensation. So I'm not deciding, right, I'm going to move here and there, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that. I'm just trying to follow what it is I feel that sensation wants to do in my body. And it might be something very subtle, or it might be something very big or sudden. Um, and then when that sensation begins to fade or disappears, I can then uh, find a different uh, place in my body to generate that sensation through a rub. And then I'm going to respond, see how I move in response to that sensation. And when that fades, I might ge uh, generate another sensation in a different way. I, I just used my hands both times. I might also use different parts of my body to generate that sensation. So when you're ready, let's go for it. So that directional rub or brush. And then the response in movement.
finding different places in the body to generate that sensation, that brush. And trying to be really attentive to the sensation. So you're not making up your response, but you're really accurately responding through movement in the body directly to the sensation. That response might be in the surface itself or that sensation might travel through the body. You might like to try giving more than one brush and seeing how your response happens. Once again, that might be quite local to the area or it might move through the body. how your body responds may be quite different to mine, and that's okay. Just a few more moments to explore. Responding to sensation. finding a place to finish. So what did it feel like to respond to a sensation? Was that uh, enjoyable or did you find it perhaps challenging? Um, and if you were to do the score again, could you make some adaptations that uh, might make it work a li little bit more easily or a bit more enjoyably for you? Um, perhaps it might be a smaller brush or uh, a, a larger or stronger brush. Perhaps you could try um, moving with the eyes closed. Or perhaps you might uh, explore um, different, a lot more variety of different places in the body or different levels in the body. Lots of choices. So there we just worked with um, touch but what would happen if we responded through movement to light or images? Or what would it be like to respond through movement um, uh, to sound or smell, for example, a fragrance or taste or perhaps thoughts? And so there's a, there's a, a chance to try something else if you want to pause and practice again, do this part again, if you like, and then join back in when you're ready. The aim of this final score is to build some confidence in navigating your own pathway through a score. So with everything that we've done so far, the hand dance, uh, the uh, playing with off balance, the image of the light coming from the 
internal organs um, and brushing and responding to the sensation. Um, this score comes from two dance practitioners, Charlie Morrissey and Katie Coe, and the score is to dance what's left in the body or dance the traces that we have in our body from all of the experiences that we, that we have done so far. As we go through, you can think about exploring possibilities um, or following your interest and curiosity. Uh, you might like to make some choices um, as a way to navigate through or just to get started and um, also to respond to what's happening as it happens. So remember, there are no right answers here. Um, we learn as we go and uh, we don't have to try too hard uh, and keep, keep looking for what it is that you find interesting in the score. So I'm gonna start moving. Um, this might be an opportunity that you can really turn away from the screen so you can concentrate on your own uh, score, your own dancing, um, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Finding a way to finish your score. And we'll finish there. So you might like to return to any of those scores or perhaps combine them together um, and make the changes that you that work best for you. Um, find a way to navigate through a score that you find uh, pleasurable and enjoyable. For me, that's the main thing. Um, thanks for joining class and if you like this session you can click like below. Um, you might like to make a comment or ask a question in the comment section um, and you can also subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot, take care.